Hogan got the biggest box. He had a separate deal and everything, but, um, you know, it was like, there was like, um, I guess there was 15 guys, 15 guys that, you know, the Iron Sheik and Volkov and I mean, this whole bunch of guys, probably about 15 guys in the 80s right there that, you know, we were a team that just drew all kinds of money. The matches were good from from the, the start to the to the finish. And, um, you know, it was just everybody knew how to work. Everybody knew. Everybody got along. That's another thing. And everybody was a happy family. You go into the dressing room nowadays, everybody's playing with a phone or some game. Back in my day, everybody was, it, it was a family. You know, it was a family. It wasn't the days of cell phones and stuff like that. So that has a lot to do with it, guys, you know, just hanging around, not, not socializing because of the damn telephone there. But, you know, back in that day, it was a family. And we were out to make money from top to bottom, you know. And to be proud, of, and to be proud of our product, we were, we were proud to be in the WWF. I know I was, and I was proud when I was in NWA, but I was more proud when I was in WWF because they were, you know, they were, they spearheaded the pay-per-views and WrestleManias and the Royal Rumble, Survivor Series, and SummerSlam, and all those, all those great pay-per-views and. Monday Night Raw, back then I guess it was Tuesday Night Titans, but then they we created Monday Night Raw and all that stuff, you know. So everything was innovative, everything was cutting edge. It was a great time to be a pro wrestler in the 80s, late 70s, 80s, early 90s. And then, and then they, you know, they kind of lost the, I kind of lost the it factor. Well, well, when WCW went down and Vince kind of took over everything, you know, it, uh, you know, you got to have competition to keep keep everything going. You know, if there's only one sliced bread on the, there's only Sarah Lee and nothing else. You know, I mean, it's, the bread's not going to be as good. Same thing with the wrestling. You got to have competition. No, I really didn't want to do it. Um, I didn't mind being Honky's partner with the blonde hair and everything, but you know, um, but you know, they they Jimmy Hart chased me around with a bottle of black dye for eight months and stuff, and so finally I just decided, you know, I'll give it a try. You know, I was I'd been there twenty some years in WWF, so. I, uh, with everything I do in wrestling, I, I go out a hundred percent or even more and, uh, we made it work. And then he Vince hired the road warriors. So that was it for rhythm and blues. They put honky talk in the, uh, in the, uh, radio on that or not radio, the television announcing Vince. And then, then they, uh, they did a deal with me where they shipped me to Japan once a month. And actually, you know, it was all right. You know, I was going to Japan for about six months, gave me a break from the WWF. Then I came back with the blonde hair and kind of did a baby face turn so-so against Jimmy Hart. But, you know, the office wasn't really behind it. I wasn't really behind it. And, uh, you know, I was after WrestleMania seven. I was ready to go, but you know, you look at it, 1979 to 1992. That, that's a pretty long run in a, in a big market like that. Oh yeah. And uh, and after that, I I did a few jumps in WCW and that, but I had a great independent run and went to uh, a lot of places, Europe, Japan, and all that, and independent. Uh, I was just asked to come to Germany a couple of months ago, but I, with all this uh, terror stuff going on, I, I was just, you know, I passed on it. I don't want to, I don't want to go to Europe. You know, I mean, you never know 
me over there with a the blonde hair, I'd be a, I'd be a perfect target. <laughs> it's it's funny. We just didn't. Uh, I don't think uh, we really got you as a as a baby face because we wanted to see you drop that hammer. You know, on the good guys, not not be one of the good guys. So I can definitely see, you know, as somebody growing up, we uh, we didn't really uh, we didn't really dig the when you got the theme music, then we knew it was all over because uh, we just wanted to see the uh, the the robe come out and a couple of those hammers drop on, uh, you know, some of those pretty boys. But so you did not like the uh, the baby face run for uh, for the hammer. No, because you got you got to be. You got to be exactly the way you were as a villain to make it work. I've, I've watched my dad in in Texas, biggest heel of all time, and then he would come out and they'd put him against Flint Spot and Eric or some other heel. Naturally, he right away as a babyface, but he didn't have to change his style. And uh, you know, if I could have done something like that where I didn't have to change my style. It it was a real small baby face run. I worked with Dino around. And, um, you know, so no big deal. If the office wants to be behind it, that's fine. I don't, I, 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 I didn't like it, so I wasn't, I wasn't ready for that. Now when I do independent shows, you know, they're so happy to see me because I'm not on television anymore. I'm, I'm right away a babyface, but I can turn that around to being a heel real quick.